Hi everyone, welcome to Unmute's Sneak Peek Part 2. This is a pre-recorded event that will be streamed live April 2nd with a fly follow-up artist Q&A and then posted on unmute.nyc. We are in week 7 of this online residency and we're just touching base in an artist roundtable with half of the teams. We've gathered five from Unmute 10002. Please wave to us as I introduce you. Team Ram, Gabriele Gervitskaita from Lithuania. Hi. And Yi Xuan Lai from NYC. Hi. Welcome. Team Stream, Marie Lukachova from the Czech Republic. Uh, hi. And Emily Shanahan from New York City. Hello. Team Branch, Alex Miritsu from Romania. Hi, everyone. And Sydney Shavers from New York City. Hi. Team Cloud, Yusima Banaszczyk, also known as Fool from Poland, who could not be here with us today. And Emmanuel Massillon from New York City. How you doing? Last but not least, we have Team Key. Sophie Guisset from Wallonia, Belgium, who couldn't be here today, and Will Calhoun from NYC. Hello, hello. I'm going to try to get outside and suck up some of this vitamin D. How's everybody doing? Team Branch, how's it going? Cool. Hi. Okay. Uh, it's good. Um, we have uh, been, we just, entered a new level of our project or a new phase of our project. Um, we're thinking a lot about, um, there's been a lot of process happening um, in terms of getting to this point um, and a lot of language choosing and this idea of like chance and like fluxes and um, flux and um, we're kind of going back and forth and kind of uh, creating pieces that way. Alex, if you wanna jump in and Hi. Uh, yeah, it's it's been uh it's been quite a uh, few interesting uh, weeks, a couple of interesting weeks, and um, yeah, I think we so we started um, uh, from language, let's say, and um, uh, our discussion kind of revolved around um, notions around language, and uh, maybe language as capital, and um, um, and then uh, we insisted, I think, at, at some point at uh, the performative aspect of our practices. And we were thinking of not, um, so we were careful of not um, removing or um, detaching from this performative um, thing that we both share. And um, yeah, we talked about many things, but um, um Kim Kardashian. Kim Kardashian <laughs> yeah, it's one of the things. We've, uh, yeah, our process has been really interesting. Like we're pulling from like uh, technology and like media sources. Um, so there's like a game that Connie and Kim were playing um, like in an episode of Keeping yeah. Up. Um, and they like take a Webster's Dictionary and they go through all of the... Um, definitions on a page and decide if it, the word is like positive or negative. Um, so we kind of took that aspect and filtered it like five times and like this idea of like a common language, right? It's kind of at work um, and popular language and the words that, the way that words have kind of like uh, evolved. So we picked um, a quit at some point, right? And then it kind of has evolved since then, um, but yeah. Team Cloud. How's your project developing? Can you tell us a little bit about it? Uh, yes, our project is developing uh, very well. We had some issues like communication and just, um, you know, uh, my partner being in Poland and me being in America and time difference and language barrier. Oh, uh, we, you know, we've got a new system of communication going on. So everything's good. Uh, so basically, we're still in the idea stage. We just now started. Um, getting into like the more physical aspect. Uh, so we started our conversation on the idea of like, since we're from two different backgrounds and two different parts of the world, what's some similarities that both our cultures have that we can make work about? Uh, so for my partner being from Poland, 
uh, she was interested in like the witch hunts in like the early um, 1300s, 1500s. And uh, she was asking me about like how is crime in like America uh, and her experience and how media uh, portrays both of our countries. And so we were interested in those ideas. So we started recording, you know, uh, footage from our own environments and uh, planning to incorporate it into a video. Um, my partner also does like a industrial sound, she's an industrial sound producer, and I also produce music. Uh, so we're planning to like, uh, you know, uh, incorporate sound to both our environments to make kind of a soundtrack along with a video with like found objects. Because in my own work, my sculptural practice, I use work with found objects. So kind of using that same language to video and technology to talk about how both cultures are perceived in the media internationally. Uh, in regards to like sexism, uh, race, violence, et cetera. So it's a very much, a lot of complex topics that we're trying to condense into a 10 minute video. Uh, and then one of the biggest problems we have too is kind of like editing the sound and video like back and forth, like in real time. So it's gonna be a lot of back and forth to get to the level of satisfaction we both would like, so that's it. Thank you, Emmanuel. And now a brief recording from Yustema, also known as Fool, who couldn't be here today. Hi guys, it's Yustema from Team Cloud here. I'm sorry that I couldn't join our group meeting, but uh, I have been a little bit sick and felt very tired uh, last Friday and I just felt that I need a break and Mm, self-care and stuff like that especially that in Poland the pandemic situation is getting very hard and it's all very stressful and um, yeah views for the close future are not so bright um, I just wanted to tell you that I am working uh, on our project with uh, Emmanuel. Um, right now I am focusing on uh, the son sonification part. So I am collecting um, images of writings on the wall, on, on the walls in Poland, which were created during the protests. Um, it's kind of funny because the minister of Justice in Poland uh, have uh, <laughs> created a report uh, collecting <laughs> all those uh, all those images from all around the country. So I am just using this report as my uh, source material for the sonification, um, which is kind of uh, interesting <laughs> in my opinion. Um, uh, so yeah. Um, we have also idea for the title of our work, but I think we will reveal it when the time comes. <laughs> um, so yeah, mm, I think that's it for now. Um, and I hope uh, I will be able to join our group meeting next time. Thanks and I hope you are all Okay, guys, and yeah, we should all just try to relax and look into the future, which will come sooner or later. <laughs> Bye. Team Ram, how's it going for you? Um, uh, me and then Gabby, uh, I'm very happy to uh, be with Gabby as my teammate. It's like we talk about how amazing that we are. I never see Gabby in person before, but how trustful and implement that because we see each other every once every week, sometimes two times in a week. So, uh, we kind of uh, digging into each other other's project and we pick up um, topics of prosthetic as, as this idea that we want to work a project together so if Gabby want to also talk about how you think about this project that we gonna do together hmm. like I'm feeling like really relaxing and like having fun with you 
And even if we are talking about serious things, we we really like like the idea is to to make it more playful. And uh, how 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 to speak about serious things in playfulness? So yeah, I wish was uh, to have fun. <laughs> so <laughs> so we kind of um talk a lot more about like. The invisibility and the visibility from how we feel, the feelings of um, fragility or intimacy, and what we need, and we want to um, use prosthetic as an idea, not only um, try to fixing something what we feel vulnerable about, but also as an extra power that what we can become. So I'm really excited uh, with Gabby to corroborate this project. Team Stream, how's it going? Uh, I think it's cool. It's cool. I, I take it like a, a like a personal uh, psychotherapy, <laughs> which is every every week, and it's really nice to talk with Emily every week and. Um, the two last meeting maybe we, we started creating something so <laughs> it's also nice but uh it's really really um, helpful for me to talk about the situation around us and compare it and uh, yeah so so that's nice i don't know emily if you want yeah. To, yeah. yeah yeah no it's been so nice to like learn more about marie's practice we've been we started with just like you know sharing sharing each other's work and trying to maybe think about like what are some points of connection and I guess it was like three weeks three weeks ago like I shared a video I had done and there was that song the Alexa song it was a song generated by an AI and that got us talking about like sound a bit more um and Marie also works with sound and music a lot so we we're just trying to like bounce this idea around of maybe like leading with sound in the project, especially because it seems like we're just so like visually exhausted, you know, all the time, like even more so now, like we're so saturated with visual images. And so we've been like, yeah, talking about maybe trying to like have sound be, be the priority. So we're still working through, I think, like what that might look what that might sound like and we just started like collecting sounds from our studios or like our domestic spaces and i think because we've been like inviting each other into our spaces every week we're sort of collecting sounds from those in immediate environments so yeah i think we're we're still like in the process like research stage and um and it'll it'll definitely be developing over the next few weeks. Um, and we're talking about maybe, yeah, collaborating on a drawing collage as well to sort of have a still image to kind of ground those sounds. Yeah, <laughs> thank you very much <laughs> for describing that. And actually we, we, we also tried to create some picture for this voice uh, together, together by the collages and um, drawings and mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you, Team Stream. And last but not least, um, for today representing Team Key, Will. It's going fantastic. Um, Sophie's my partner. It's been great to link up with her. A few little timing issues because she's, I guess, she's living between Berlin and Brussels. She travels back and forth. There was a Euro um, East Coast American time difference. So there were a few things that are going back and forth between us two, but the conversations have been fun. Some of the things have been recorded, some haven't, because sometimes we get into politics a little bit and, and uh, life and um, art and the politics within life and art. So um, I find her to be very interesting. Uh, she has a great, um, point of view. I think if she's a she's a free thinker, uh, kind of a, a, in, in a sense of her of expressing herself as an artist, which is how I live my life. So we get along completely on the same page on that in that aspect. 
we're going to begin to my idea with Sophie was was to was to think about our art maybe as you as you would if I look if I if I look at linguistics we're going to just do a word like she's going to send me a movement and I'm going to send a beat or a sound and the movement can be a hand or a flower in the garden or something we want to start small and just think about what kind of a movement and then we want to expand on it maybe and say okay give me send me five minutes of movement or send me three minutes of movement and then i'll send you three minutes of sound so instead of trying to with this limited amount of time kind of invade each other's creative spaces we're kind of almost playing scrabble a little bit we were just putting words together and sounds and ideas together and we're just going to throw them back and forth in really small bits so we're not pushing each other's agenda so much we want to really try to go into this with the really fair spiritual market value of her sending something on me or me sending her something and saying here's a sound here's a guitar riff here's a keyboard thing here's even even the sounds even the sound of like a brook or a stream or uh, being in traffic what what kind of movement would you uh, match to this and i think we're going to start to build tiny sentences of these kind of ideas and then when we have a couple sentences we'll start to look more at honing in on how we want to move forward on the project but that's our our process instead of saying i'm a musician she's a dancer i've done i toured here she's done 15 you know choreography shows and kind of coming into it that way we, we want to keep it a little bit more honest and fun and open and just not go into it with a typical my resume your resume and i think this my idea was just start with small bits, you know, two, uh, two seconds, five seconds, 10 seconds of something, let me put something to that and vice versa. And it's more fun, it's more creative that way. And I think it takes, for me personally, one of the things we talked about, we don't want to come into this project the way we do everything else. That's kind of the idea too. We don't want to come into this like, I always score, I always compose, I always play this instrument. We, we be trying to, this is a great opportunity, I think to creatively, create outside the box. So that's what we're using this opportunity to, to try to do. So I'm having fun. She has a great sense of humor, very easy to, to chat with. Um, and she's open. So I can, I can kind of throw almost anything at her and she's going to be like, okay, cool. Let me try this. Let me try that. So, and then she interviewed me, which was kind of funny. You know, uh, she asked me things like, do I dance? <laughs> And uh, I thought that was interesting when we first met. She kind of gave me like a little interview and when, you know, why are you a musician or why? Are you... But I, 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 I understood where she was coming from. She was just trying to get, I guess, kind of a bit of a gander on my creative background. But that was a little funny for me the first time we met, how she had these questions about what inspires me to do what I do. So uh, from the first interview to now, we've come quite a good distance and um, she has a great sense of humor as I like to joke. So um, it's, it's, it's coming out great. And I think we're gonna have something unique. And my goal is for us to do something that's not compares to anything that she or I have done on our own. Great, thanks so much, Well, And now a brief recording from Sophie who couldn't be here with us today. So for me, it was a, uh, yeah, I was really curious to meet Will. And uh, of course, the first Zoom session that we had, just the two of us, was really uh, was really special, because we yeah we come from two different countries, we have two different age. Uh, I'm yeah I'm 34 and I think he's 55. Um, I think it's going well. I get along really well with Will. It's full of surprise. Uh, also, he's a drummer and I'm a performance artist. So we are like now in the process of getting to know each other and discover each other's practice and backgrounds. I, of course, the, the easy thing would be because he's a drummer and I'm a performance artist to will to compose like, a, like music and me performing on it, but this will not happen. This I know because I don't want this to happen. I actually want to talk and to discover will in another way. You know, just to find like a common ground, which is different from maybe from my practice and from his practice. I want us to meet in a new place for both of us. So I'm going to open this up a little bit to a question for the whole group, because I think that there's um, a couple of things that um, I see a connection with these all of you. There's 
Uh, and it's different from the prior five teams, which is kind of unique. But um, you're all sort of dealing with these really slippery concepts, these objects or concepts that are non-tangible even. Do you think that the, these sorts of really non-tangible subject matter or concepts are actually more dictated with the fact that you have to use something like Zoom as a means for communication? I'm just going to open that up and anybody can is welcome to answer. Yeah, I'll answer. I'll start by saying it's it's Zoom. It's it's um, yeah, it's challenging. You don't see the person. You're not in the same room. I think when it comes to art, I'm a I'm a musician and I'm a drummer, and you know, vibration, people's mannerisms, how they talk, how they move, all of those things can give me information faster than a flat screen. Um, the sound is coming out of a phone or a computer. So in terms of the academic. Uh, influence of a voice or it, it's not realistic. It's kind of like a machine. So it's kind of like listening to a record or a phonograph or something where it's, you know, it's kind of set up to sound a certain way. So just being a sound freak for me, there's a lot of um, unnatural sides to communicating on Zoom. Uh, it's great. It's a great piece of technology, obviously, and we're in a, we're in a pandemic. Mm -hmm. But um, if I had the choice of sitting down with Sophie in a room or at a coffee shop or something like that, or in a recording studio or anywhere, I think we would be way much further down the line with, 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 with the creativity piece. Because I think as humans, we just read things. We're just human beings and we read things as human beings. We read things as sound and smells and tones and, and um, body movement and language. And I think this format homogenizes that experience. Yeah. I oh, go ahead. Um, oh, I was just gonna chime in, and I I agree with Will. It, it it's total. I've never collaborated in in this way before, and I um, I think yeah, like it's like it's a double process of like getting to know each other, right? Like first and foremost, just as a person, and then also getting to know the work, and then like okay, how can we work together? So I think. Um, yeah, it's just been like a very unique experience. And I, I think we're maybe just trying to find a way that like we can collaborate that makes sense and that will result in something that feels um, like satisfying to us. Um, and so, yeah, I, it's going it's going well, but it's definitely very, very unique circumstances for sure for, to be creative. Yeah. Um... I think that this project is really cool and that I feel like it's really fitting for this format um, just because this idea of like mediation or like translation uh, that's like embedded in technology um, is something that we, you know, so it's just like a very like, like it's a one-to-one, -one, not a one-to-one, -one, but kind of like an experience, like it's very much involves like the slippage that I think all of our projects have in it because of like, it's being informed by that. like we're definitely being informed by that, but also just like this idea of, um, yeah, I don't know, just this idea of like the slippage of it all or this mediation and this like transformation um, or like even like the idea of the glitch, you know, or this idea of things like not being perfect, so, or translated perfectly, so. <clears throat> For me, I see like it's this, um, whatever the topics we are talking about this, like I feel like I need to be um, super sensitive, like to 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 be sensitive to my partner, to others, like how to say things, how to explain, how to show, how to listen. Like it's it's also big tolerance to each other, and yeah, that's 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 that can be challenging for some. But really, really interesting. Look, I, I kind of, uh, with me and Gabby, we kind of create a online platform called Miro. So on Zoom, we we share this, we will share the screen and then Gabby also has the access on this platform. And we kind of put in our thoughts, keywords, ideas, and or also our past work in there. I feel it's a kind of digitalized way to 
really make our mindset and thoughts uh, visual, visually present in a space, digital space. And I think that's interesting. Sorry, Marie had to leave already. I'm going to ask that everybody has their chat open. And um, I'm going to ask that you type into the chat the first word that comes to mind when I actually give you uh, a word. So this word, and then we'll sort of expand on it. The word is analog. Well, I put warm because analog academically was designed for the, the human ear. The machines that were built originally for sound with analog systems were built for the shape of our eardrums and how our bodies work. Scientists at that time designing the sound that was geared to, to how we exist. So digital has another kind of approach to it. So for me, warm just means accepting and expansive and kind of free in a way. And I look at analog as something that um, it kind of has a back to basics. It kind of has a real organic feel. Um, if I could, if I could think about it in in family terms for those that listen, it would be the difference between eating dinner at your house that you make, eating dinner at your parents' house that they make, and eating dinner at your grandparents' house. Analog for me would be eating dinner at my grandparents' house. It just has another kind of a, a time period, if that makes sense to anybody out there, but. Um, when I think about when I mean, my grandparents passed, but when I think when I remember going to eating there, it was like another level and a different type of love and concern and and the energy. The, let's just say the energy going into those meals were not not like any other place I've been. So there's definitely a difference between those three. So if I can give you a visual, that's my visual. Yeah, it seems like in a lot of these words, um, there's this idea of like physicality um, that we all are trying to like grasp at in different ways. And it's really interesting to see like the different turns that that all takes. Um, but also like this idea of like filling, I don't know, with the word like content or, um, you know, something stuffed or something that, you know, like very physical, like material. Yes. Uh, I chose the word uh, computer. I, this is what I heard about the word analog. I thought about computer. And, you know, the analog computer was one of the first um, computers built to, like, solve problems. And then, you know, that inspired other scientists to talk about, like, algorithms. And now I think about how algorithms control most of our lives. Like, there's an app that has an algorithm for everything. They say even, like, the GPS running on algorithm. Like, if there's an accident on the road, there's an algorithm that can give you the fastest route. There's an algorithm... I can tell you what's the likelihood of you being depressed on Facebook and just, I don't know, this is a control about how all these giant tech conglomerates have over our lives and they're collecting all this data and feeding it to these computers. So this is, this is the first thing to hang on mind. Emily, I like how you um, wrote an abacus. Can you, uh, some people might not know what an abacus is. I didn't even know that I thought about advocacies. I, I don't know why that word came into my head. But I think when I yeah, when I hear analog, I I just like to me, I don't know if this is correct, but I just think like old technology or like older, simpler forms of technology, like older tools. Um so I don't know, my brain went there. Um yeah, I think of it as like the opposite of something like speedy or fast or like shiny or new. Like I think of it as old and um, not ancient, but like something foundational maybe. Okay, let's do one more word. Thank you. Um, yesterday's team had two different words, by the way, than you guys are getting. The next word, and get ready for your chat. And Yishuan, I hope you'll put something down because I see you didn't write anything. The next word is digital.
Does anybody want to expand? Uh, I chose uh, communication, like when it first came to mind. This is, you know, it's ironic because we're all communicating virtually, digitally, or, you know, but it's interested in how, you know, um, even on Instagram, you might meet someone that you might share common interest and you guys start talking and you guys become friends and you're communicating with them. Or you might be doing a business deal with someone via email and you guys are virtual, you know what I'm saying? Um, and this, this, this how, just how um, technology allows you to communicate with people all across the world. It just, it just fascinates me. I read about hard drive because um, it's just a hard drive running in front of me, like get this heat and then the sound. But imagine how this hard drive stores that kind of invisible information and data, but actually they are really there. Like this kind of also invisibility and the visible thing and this relationship in digital space. Yeah, I kind of was thinking along those lines as well. I picked reality um, just because I agree. I think this, there's this idea that the digital space isn't real or exists in like a different realm, but it is a very like physical, um, like real thing or real experience. Um, and yeah, just that idea of um, it being like present, like even though it's technically, yeah, invisible. I chose the like without smell or uh, so I was feeling like you know uh, like when you meet a, you know, a person in person uh, you can smell it you know there and in in a digital in in our conversations I even don't know how you smell so for me it was like yes. There's some really nice parallels when you talk, when you were all talking about this, because my mind always goes to nature with analog and how a lot of the, a lot of these words actually have that sort of binary. We can, we could replace it with another word. I'm going to ask you all one more question as a group. Does any of your work, especially as we're dealing with things that are really slippery like this, does any of it become political? My answer is yes. Definitely. Yeah, language is how we shape everything. Um, and so it's inherently political. Um, yeah, like words, their meanings only are created through like, and I think this is something our project, like we're thinking about a lot is um, the action and like the idea of a concept. Um, I think we got it. Uh, you are halfway through the project. Congrats. Give yourselves a round of applause. We look forward to seeing what else unfolds. Um, and now we're going to go to the live Q&A. Artists, can you all please turn on your cameras? Hey everybody, how are you? Hi, fine. It's nice to see you again. You guys can all unmute yourselves. Um, so thank you all for participating in that. Um, I'm just gonna take some of the questions from the chat. Um, and we have one from Dalia. Is it a nice change of pace to be working with another creator whose artistic practice and or sensibilities are perhaps outside of your comfort zone? Hi guys, can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, we can, Yasuna. Okay, so unfortunately I am here alone. Emmanuel is not with us today. 
not sure why, but mm, that's how it is. Um, I should answer this question now, yeah? Let me think for a second. <laughs> uh, well, it's really hard to answer because um, I'm not really sure if those sensibilities are outside of my comfort zone. <laughs> so I'm not sure if I have such experience working with a manual. Um, hard to say. <laughs> Maybe after we finish our work, I will be able to tell more about this whole process and, you know, I don't know, uh, to be honest, uh, at this uh, stage of our collaboration, I don't know how to answer this question. We have to work a little bit more together. Fair enough. Does anybody else have an answer for that? Um, I feel like, um, I don't know, I feel like Alex and I are, uh, our subject or our, um, material like it's kind of similar in certain ways, but it's different. Um, and so, yeah, it's really nice to kind of see just like another perspective, like regarding like performance or like our use of language or we're both into like this idea of like objects and like um, object oriented ontology and like hyper objects. Um, and so that's been really cool to kind of uh, experience like these mediated conversations through this like Zoom. Um, and we've been talking about that uh, a lot lately in terms of how we take our practices, which can be kind of um, ephemeral sometimes uh, because they're performance based and how we can translate that for each other um, through like Zoom. Um, so that's been really interesting, yeah. Thanks, Sydney. Anybody else want to answer that? We had a little bit of a joke during these pre-recordings that these two groups were broken into a, a loud group and a quiet group. This is the uh, quiet group. This is the, this is the mute group. Um, Marie and I were talking a little bit last week about our project and how, like how we work, like our different processes. And so this question makes me think of like what was coming up for me in terms of how differently we work maybe, but like, I feel like um, I'm always trying to like create an idea before I go ahead with something, like make sure that the idea sort of works before I like go forward. And it's been so interesting to hear about Marie's process being more like maybe just process based and just like trusting the process. And so I've been trying to do that more in my work. And as we like, go forward with our project. And so that's just been really helpful for me on like a personal level to like get really acquainted with someone's, the method that they work with and how, um, yeah, I can really kind of like unlock maybe some things in my own practice. And um, yeah, so that's been like a really nice, um, I guess, a consequence of like, of collaborating on this project together. Yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty nice for me because I realized that uh, both of us, Emily and me, just work uh, by the visual language and our languages are super different one, but uh, we solve a little bit similar things like um, process of visual visualization of and or looking how, how we look to things. And I'm drawing and Emily uh, work more in a technical way of seeing like uh, you use a scanner, Emily, and it's so visual for me. So maybe I think we, we create something which will be really visual right now. And um, yeah, it's and it's connected by by the um, by the things, but um, yeah, <laughs> but I think it will be um, installation or something like this. 
and it's it's really helpful for me either. So thank you, Emily, very much. <laughs> Okay, um, I have another question uh, from the chat here. Um, could you tell me what the most difficult time for each of you as an artist during the last year when the pandemic hit the world was? Uh, I'll answer that. The, the most difficult time is the, I think was somewhat of a fallout. And when I say fallout, I mean, when something like that happens, the first thing you think about is, you know, your generic survival and what you can do and what your colleagues can and can't do. And then you start kind of adjusting, you know, whether it's buying gear to work at home or building your home studio or outside of the health practices, you start trying to create things. So, so you, can, you can proceed with your artistic endeavors and your general life the fallout piece really becomes difficult because you just realize that things are changing and they're going to change. And I hear a lot of folks say things like going back to, going back to, and I think it's gonna be less of going back to and more forward to what we're gonna be doing as artists in the future from this moment on. I think for everyone's life, teachers, parents, uh, civil workers, engineers, sound men and women, production people, our game has changed. Our, our entire format has changed. And we have to think about now how we're going to move forward. And all of those things are not, we're not able to be answered at the moment. So the most difficult time for me was the fallout of realizing shops are going to close, clubs are going to close, the airlines are going to change, going into venues are going to change, art galleries are going to change, all of those things personally that I like to do and be, being, there's a, there's a, there's a fallout section and I think the most difficult phase was just realizing and it, it took a minute but just uh, renavigation how am I going to continue to be the artist that I want to be and interact with other artists like yourselves in this new age because we're not going to just all of a sudden wake up I think in anywhere in the next year and just start going back to things the way we did pre-COVID so the fallout piece is important and the renavigation and what we're going to do or what I'm going to do and how I'm going to do it and who can I link up with to help me with my vision. It, it's a different, almost terrain. It's like we left the forest and the snow and now we're out on the beach. Uh, that's kind of kind of how it is now. So that's the most difficult point and challenging and a very creative point as well because as an artist now I'm thinking about myself and my work and my international property, you know, my IPs and what I've done in the past, I'm doing a little bit more digging and to pulling things out I didn't pay attention to in the past. And now I'm looking at my myself as an artist in a more holistic way and a full view of it. And things that I did 15, 20 years ago now are have a different meaning because of COVID. They have a more valuable meaning actually. So reshuffling the deck and renavigation is was the most difficult part and accepting it and now knowing that in order for me to continue i have to take different steps that i took in all the previous parts of my career thanks will does anybody else want to take a stab at that question yeah i would like to say that the hardest thing for me was the very beginning because it was yeah, it was hard to meet with somebody who I never met before and then collaborated somehow. But now, or by the processing, by, by the meetings, I think it, we become almost like the friends and meeting with Emily is super nice for me. And it's, it's not like, oh, okay, it's seven o'clock, so I have to go to meeting. But yeah, yeah, today is the Friday and <laughs> I see her. So, so it's really, it's really, uh, thanks to the process of uh, of meeting and now it's so so much easier for me and i think that we create something really really cool right now so uh so that's good and also also it's really really helpful for me to compare the uh, the, the pandemic situation with someone who lives uh, in a, another country which is super far away from from me right now 
<laughs> Thanks so much, Marie. I have another question here. It's actually directed to Team Cloud, to Emmanuel, who's not here. Um, it's too bad. Um, I'll read it anyways. Uh, in your project process, you reflect on systemic oppression related to gun violence through two quite distant traditions and moments in time, the Eastern European myth mythology and Polish witch witchcraft and witch hunts from the 13th to 15th centuries. And you connect that in American police criminal investigations that you both render that through American hip hop culture and Fool's electronic experimental sonic spaceage, which will result in a video and a sound artwork. Which aspects in Yusinla, in Yusinla's work do you connect with specifically that are point of intersections for narrative? Also, would you tell us more about the videos you had been recording? So I know that Emmanuel couldn't be here. He had a, he had a family uh, emergency. Um, maybe Yusinla, could you answer to any of that? Um, I can try. <laughs> um, I mean, um, we were trying with Emmanuel to find some kind of like um, common experience, mutual experience as human beings, <laughs> um, which was uh, like the strongest part of our experience during the pandemic year. Um, and it happened that uh, both in Poland and in USA, there were uh, huge protests. Uh, in, Pol in Poland, uh, we had huge protests related to uh, reproduction rights. Uh, um, in, in USA, um, it was um, related to um, George Floyd's death and Black Lives Matter movement. And all of a sudden we uh, realized that our um, common experience as a human beings and uh, also in arts uh, is, uh, is the experience of uh, oppression, of systematic oppression and uh, of protest. So we slowly started to uh, um, move towards uh, this kind of topics. Um, I am also involved in the feminist uh, movement in, for, for many years, also in my artistic practice. Um, so um, we started to look for um, this kind of common ground in our artistic practice. And uh, uh, from what I know, Emmanuel um, is exploring uh, for example, the topic of race uh, in United States. So uh, it kind of led us to um, the topic of uh, oppression. Um, yeah, and we are slowly digging deeper into our, into our <laughs> experience and trying to build something together upon this topic. Mm. Yeah, so this is what I can say. <laughs> it's a very long question, so I have to take a look what, what else was hidden inside. Uh, I think that was pretty good, Justina. Thank you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I only have a few minutes left, so I'm gonna actually ask the group. This is a really great question. Um, based on your experiences, did you become more interested to travel to the place or country of your partner? Well, uh, I always wanted to travel to New York, so <laughs> nothing changed for me. <laughs> but I hope Emmanuel will visit Poland someday. Uh, <laughs> He was already invited, so when pandemic ends, I hope we will exchange. <laughs> I would also like uh, go to Poland. 
I think that Poland is super, super nice country and has the best dishes. <laughs> well, it has its ups and downs, but yeah, I think uh, all countries are great <laughs> in a way. Um, yeah, come, come to Poland, of course. Right now I am uh, in Łódź, uh, which is a kind of uh, interesting place, if you like, um, um, like 19th century industrial heritage and this kind of <laughs> stuff. It's, it's really interesting. So be my guest. <laughs> wow. Actually, I'm t maybe 10 kilometers from Polish border, so. <laughs> so there is a huge chance. <laughs> huge one. Was there anything that surprised any of you that you uh, discovered about yourself or your team uh, member throughout this process? It's a simple one, guys. <laughs> There are no simple questions. <laughs> um, I've never, like, or I haven't collaborated a lot. So it's interesting to like collaborate with somebody else, I think in this way. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'll say for me um, with, with, with Sophie, it, I, was, I was actually impressed on how open she was um, about life and art. She's 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 young lady and she's, I think, quite intelligent and really uh, fearless, um, which is the way I feel. I, I felt I was at that age and, and younger, and I am even now. But it was nice to to hear Sophie just talk about her. She she talks about her art in a way where she just wants to do it, and I don't hear any boundaries. I don't hear any 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 in inhibitions when she discusses her work and when you're when you're an artist for me i just feel like that's a, that's a really great conversation and i was a bit surprised honestly when she talked about her interests and what she wanted to do and how she didn't want anyone to control what she's doing she wants the, her art to come out the way she wanted to come out and when she wanted to come out and she wasn't she didn't seem to be attracted to to the financial side if she was really coming from a pure place of artistry so I was a bit surprised at that because I'm that way and I don't like talking about it, but it, it was nice for her just to open up and say, you know, Will, this is, I don't like doing this. I don't like doing that. I like doing this. And I thought, wow, okay, she's cutting to the chase. That's gonna, it's gonna make this, this, this project a lot easier to, to, to accomplish now. So that was a surprise. Um, she wasn't shy at all about that. She just fired right away with her likes and don't, don't likes and her openness. So uh, I think that was a beautiful beginning for us to collaborate on on working on some projects together. Yeah, I also think I realized like conceptually just like the importance of like the process and um, work that I do um, in terms of like, we've taken a lot of different steps um, or like we've had a lot of different like entry points in terms of how we're finally getting to a form. Um, and just thinking a lot about like that, like um, that process and like all the different like turns it can take and like the importance of that has really just been hammered or like we've been really like hammering at that. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'll just add um, that I think there's been so much openness from Marie, like we're, I, um, Sydney, what you said about like the project having different entry points, I think is very true for us too. Like just trying to find points of connection. And I think you have to be open and like vulnerable with each other. So that's been something that I think has come quite easily and has made the process like a lot, um, like there's a lot of trust there. So um, yeah. Yeah, and I think like the having this residence, um, this project be nine weeks, I think is what it is. Like every week we're getting a little closer and more open and like more, um, I think definitive on like what this form will, will be ultimately.
Gabriela, we couldn't really hear you. Could you try unmuting yourself and speaking a little bit louder or into the microphone, please? We can't hear you. Okay, if you wanna put it in the chat, I can read it. Does anybody else wanna have any last comments? I'm gonna hold for one minute while Gabriela puts it into the chat. Will is writing, thank you. And Dinah, what do you what, what do you feel? What, what, do, what do you think about it? You in your position, I mean. On behalf of Undercurrent, uh, we love watching everything unfold. No one narrative is the same. And I think that that's what we learn through uh, through watching. And I think it's um, I think that that's a significant aspect is the diversity that we're experiencing and the um, transatlantic exchange. It's really quite fascinating, unique, and a beautiful thing. So thank you all for participating. Um, so I'm going to ask you all to unmute yourselves as artists, please, and. Um, just give yourselves a round of applause and a wave goodbye. And um, thanks so much for joining today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, guys. Have a great Bye. weekend. Thank you. Bye.